same class, and then it's like, can I just sit here and do the bike at my own? And don't don't make me sweat, okay? Don't make me sweat. It's like, serious? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about tapas. It's the third niyama, and tapas is about our sustenance, the energy that we put in the body. Because of the fact that we gather energy, food is energy, everything is energy. So if we want our body to be lively, and if we want our spirit to be lively, and if we want everything, we've got to be able to use the food that we eat as energy. And remember that it's only for that. It is only for that, right? And so we have to now go into what's called an awareness stage, where you have to see what it is you're eating and how you're eating in, in terms of how many of us eat so quickly that it's like two, three bites and boom, we swallow, right? And so um, what that bus talks to us about is that we should be mindful when we eat. And when being mindful is about looking at the food and really, really tasting the food and chewing your food at least 25 times before it goes down. How many of you guys have ever counted how many times you chew before the food goes down? No. So what happens is the majority of us usually don't. But what I want to tell you is that you should basically be drinking your food and chewing your drink. So when you drink something, chew as if you had something in your mouth because it, what it does is it activates the salivary glands and the saliva and it makes it easier for the body to build up that um, hydrochloric acid in the stomach which then begins your digestion at that level. But your digestion begins in your mouth. If you just chew your, your food two times and then push it down, it never gets a chance to completely digest. Now the absorbability of your food happens in the small intestine. And it can't happen if you haven't chewed your food and sent it down properly. Does that make sense? Now, in this day and age, in the 21st century, with all the, with all the fungicides, larvicides, pesticides, herbicides, all those sides that are attacking our food along with the air pollution that's just falling onto our to our um, soil, what it does is it creates a soil that is deficient. So if your soil is already deficient, when the food comes up from the soil, you're going to have what? Deficient vegetables. Deficient, yeah, vegetables, deficient food, right? So because we have deficient food in the 21st century, then we have to, you can no longer get everything you need. We have to do add some quality supplementation and it's critical that supplements, the vitamins that you're taking are high quality vitamins, right? And I just want to let you know that the ones you get in Costco, you're buying them because they're cheap. You're not buying them because they're actually helping you. The truth of the matter is, if you were looking for quality vitamins, do you or do you not have to pay for quality? Yes. Yes. So people will tell me, well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I want to get your vitamins, but let me finish these. And it's like, you've got rancid fish oil over there. You want to finish that rancid fish oil? You can go ahead, right? It's like, you know, if if you take if you take one of the vitamins of Costco and you put it in a in a container with water and an organic apple, in seven days, see what happens to that apple. I did that. It turns black. So imagine that that's what's happening. Is that helping ourselves? No, it's not helping ourselves. So we have to be very, very, very careful with the quality of supplements that you're taking. Right? So some people will say, I was taking GNC. On a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being the highest, GNC rates a 3, so at least a 3. On a scale of 1 to 5, um, Costco vitamins rate a half. Right? So you have to think about that. Now, eating healthy, eating healthy. You've got to go to the farmer's market. You've got to begin to 
go to local gardeners, local farmers that actually love their food, if you will, because they send energy, loving energy into the food, and that food then is energy, so then it gives you that loving energy back. Did anybody ever see the movie um, Like Water for Chocolate? Mm -hmm. Like Water for Chocolate. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it, because that's exactly what she does. She, when she cooks, notice the energy, her feeling. She talks to the food, and then Everybody who eats her food is feeling what she was feeling when she felt that, you know, when, when she was cooking the food, and that's exactly what it is. As a mother, when we have babies, what do we feel when we're fixing the food? We feel love, don't we? It's, Look, I, you're so happy. I'm going to cook this for my baby. There's so much love pouring out of you that that's normally why the kids usually never get sick with the food you cook, but then you take them out to a fast food place and guess what? Usually they get sick. Where do we get sick? Do we get food poisoning from something we ate at the house? Mm -mm. No, you get food poisoning from where? When you eat out. When you eat out, because it's energy. It's energy, think about this. Some some pissed off cook cooked your food. Think about that. The energy that goes into the food, you're ingesting all the time. So you have to be very careful. And, and what Tapas is all about is detoxing the body from the inside out through movement, right? Through movement, detoxing the body, the mind, the body, and the spirit from the inside out, right? So you move so that it creates heat and it it helps to cleanse the toxins out, right? It also helps to cleanse our spirit. Don't you feel better usually when you, let's say you've danced? Anybody do a happy dance in the morning? <laughs> right? Turn on the music and do a happy dance? I do. Yeah. <laughs> you guys saw, see my video, my happy dance, right? Did you guys see the video I posted up on YouTube where I'm drinking the, the shake, the challenge? If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Not that because I'm, I'm all the greatest, no, but it's like, it's a happy dance. So every day you do a happy dance. One of the things that I mindfully do is that when I'm cooking, I mindfully cook. In other words, I am cooking and I realize that the energy that I'm putting into this food is going to affect my family and everybody else who eats here. So I make sure that if I'm not that if I'm not in the space where I need to be, I don't cook. Same thing with your food. It talks about when to eat. If you're not in the mind when you are actually enjoying and appreciating and loving food, you should not eat. You should not eat. You have to then become aware. When do you eat? Do you eat when you're bored? Do you eat when you're worried? Do you eat when you're, um, you know, I don't know, happy? Do you eat when you're depressed? Notice when it is you're eating. Because if you're not in the right space, the food is going to continue to accumulate in your body and create a toxicity that you don't need. Right? You don't need that. Be careful who you hang around with. It's also talking about any energy we put in. Are you hanging around? People that are sort of negative, get out of there. That's a toxic energy that you're ingesting. Right? Where do you want to be? Who do you want to be with? You have to be careful to, to what we say, guard your energy. Right? And then let's say it's okay to want to be successful and you don't have to have a college degree to be successful. Many of ours... You know, once I want, I want to remind you what you have to have to be successful is the passion and then taking the action to make it happen. Because the most successful people in the world that are, that are in the limelight, Bill Gates, um, the guy from uh, Apple, God, how come I don't? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, um, Oprah Winfrey, all of those. They didn't start out going to college, right? And there's a whole bunch more I can name. Donald Trump, you know, all of those guys. They did not start out being in college, right? So 
that's not the path all the time, all the time.